Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to the shop. My name is Jamie. So I've got this metal lathe here and as I'm getting a little bit better with some of my machine skills, I've noticed that I need to level it because I'm not getting some accurate cuts over the length of a piece of material. Unfortunately, the setup that I have right now has some, some wood in it, which makes it um, very difficult for me to be able to clamp down and kind of take out some of the twist that's happening here at the back end of the lathe. So today what we're gonna do is I'm going to replace the wood with some steel and we'll get that installed and then see if we can't go ahead and get the lathe level so that it's cutting a little bit better. One tool critical for your shop is a engine hoist. You're gonna be using and lifting heavy things, moving them in your shop. You know, I found that this uh, lift and this engine hoist has come in handy uh, for things just like this. So I'm able to get the metal underneath there and I've taken some measurements so that I can bring it over to the, to the mill and start setting it up to make some uh, make some holes here. This is probably my third or fourth time using the mill and you'll notice a little bit of ex inexperience coming up later in the video. So you're going to want to make sure you stick around for that. It was uh, quite interesting. Everything worked out fine. Nobody got hurt and the machine was not broken. But as I'm looking this over, trying to lay out where I want those holes, you know, it kind of dawns on me that I've got three of these to do, so maybe I should think about it a little different way. So what are we doing here if we're not trying to learn something new? As I was kind of thinking through how I want to go about doing this, I thought, you know what, I'm going to try setup, see if I can get, replicate this three times. So I've done a couple of things. I've installed a dog here to catch the table right at this mark where this first hole is going to be. And then when I line up the second, I've got a second dog here. And then I've started with a, uh, with a square that I'm gonna use as a stop. And I've just gotta set here my clamps for the first time. We'll give these a try. So I need to give myself some credit for leaving this next section in. Uh, humility uh, is an asset, I think. You need to be willing to admit when you've made a mistake. Well, that's not gonna work. In this case, a silly one. This will not work. How am I going to roll it that way when this is here? Oh, silly. The whole table moves. <laughs> All right. So here I'm just going through double checking, triple checking my measurements. I'm looking for I think just over six inches here and want to get familiar with the table and how the scale works on the x-axis. Kind of rolling it back and forth. Get the, the, the measuring rule out here in a minute and just check the See how far revolution here goes. So we've got one revolution. It's not much. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so every five revolutions is an inch, and I need to go six and seven, eight, one, two. All right, so that brings me to 
six right at the end of my Swap in the other ones or get those center drop, center tapped. Sorry, center, center drill to get this drill started. And then we will um, we'll do that for all three. Then we'll do like a pilot hole and then we'll come out to our five eighths, which is what we want. We're going to test this one out, see if it works. system works. This third piece, because of the orientation on the lathe, is actually going the other way on my setup, so it's you're looking at the back side of the C-channel. So I just had to set the front to back distance, uh, but otherwise we could move on to drilling.
So that first drill hole went fine. As you can see, I'm taking it real slow. Still trying to figure out if the drill bits are sharp, if I'm using the right amount of pressure, you know, working through the material that I have. So lots of uh, learning happening. This is, I think, a quarter inch, maybe five sixteenths uh, drill bit or drill. Uh, but now we're moving up here. This is a five eighths. Might have been too big of a jump. So this is a, you know, a little hard to rewatch, but, you know, this bit was giving me some interesting feedback. It didn't like, uh, didn't seem like it liked a lot of pressure, but if you went too soft with it, it would just spin. Uh, but it did, you know, at some, at some points here, it threw some really nice chips and other times it was just fighting and it just didn't feel, just didn't feel right. So I'm going back now to a slightly smaller drill, open up that hole a little bit and, you know, with the hopes that it'll take some of the strain off of that gold colored 5 eighths that I have. This is, I believe, a 9 16th. And, you know, it works better. Still turn the volume down to save your ears, but you know, it's still screeching a little bit, uh, but with the right amount of pressure, throws good chips and kind of dives right in. So here I'm going back and forth between the 916th and the 58th bit. You know, they seem to be working okay. Uh, I was getting, again, inconsistent feedback, but it, they were throwing chips and I was able to, again, kind of go back and forth. But I was nearing the end uh, when things uh, got very interesting. So we'll let you uh, listen live so you can hear what I heard. So here's where, you know, I'm really not sure what happened. Bring the machine back on. It seems to be working okay, but it is making a little bit different noise. You know, I check the speed, bring the speed up, bring the speed back down. The engine, the spindle seems to be working properly. I'm just getting that kind of rat-a-tat-tat noise. Give it a little test, and I mean, it seems to be working. But at this point, I still don't know what, um, you know, what caused it. I know what caused it. The drill got bound up in the steel. That very the last cut right before it was going to go through. Sometimes it hangs up there. And this bit, it just must be very dull. Uh, so, you know, looking it over and I'm just gonna maybe be stubborn and just see if I can go through and you know it works and um, you know not very happy about where I'm sitting right now but it's what I did and I'm sharing it again so that we can all learn because I did figure out eventually what was making that noise I'll tell you here in just a minute So those that know bridge ports will know right away. And in this case, it's not what you hear. It's going to be what you see. 
I posted this video on online and very quickly uh, multiple answers as to what was happening uh, with my Bridgeport and why I was making those noises. Did you see it? So what we're looking at is the shift lever for the high low gear. It had popped out of high gear and the lever when you look at it right coming up on the right hand side you'll see that it's down so it's halfway it's just out of high gear so it's just kind of rattling there just move it up into high problem solved from here uh, what I did took the C channel put it on the metal frame welded them into place what you can see here hopefully is you know where the bolt holes the bolts are so I can actually mount the lathe to the workbench which was something that I couldn't do before. Uh, here are a couple of uh, glory shots with uh, the painted steel and everything looking really nice. And just being able to actually bolt the lathe down as opposed to having it set on the wood, which is what I have here, made a world of difference in how the lathe actually felt when I started it up and ran it. So I've got a good foundation and in our next video, I'm going to kind of walk you through how I aligned it uh, by using a level and a tape trick. Making these videos uh, for me has definitely been a challenge. It adds a different layer of complexity. And again, you have to decide, am I going to share this part or not? And I've shared a couple of mistakes and kind of my thought process in this video. But hopefully you like it. If you do, uh, hit like. If you uh, would subscribe to my channel you'll see more videos like this. And I do appreciate you watching. And until next time, this is one way to do it.